My name is Diana Harrington, and I teach at Clovis High School, and this year I teach Geometry, Advanced Math, and Calculus BC. When we first begin a section, I try very hard to hit the communication piece. They're really good at going through the number crunching and the skill, but they have great difficulty communicating what they have done. So we take care of those issues. As a, a reader from state testing, I can only grade the paper that's in front of me. I, I never grade a child. I grade their work. And if their work is not well communicated, then I cannot give it the grade that I think that they deserve. So communication to me is their platform for getting a grade. If you never get anything wrong, if you never make an error, I do not see how you can learn because you learn from your mistakes. A child when they're little learns that something's hot by putting their hand there and, and it, it hurts, but they learn never to touch it again. Whereas in a math class, they just want to put just the answer down and only the answer down and they're done. And it has to be correct whether or not their process is correct. So I want to create a safe atmosphere where learning starts with an error and it's okay to make the error. I have a tendency to teach most of my classes project-based or activity-based because I went to college in San Luis Obispo at Cal Poly and the motto there was learn by doing. Whether I'm teaching a special ed class, which is where I started teaching, um, all the way up through my calculus classes, I like discourse in the classroom. I like conversation. I think students learn best by communicating with each other because if one student doesn't get it, the other one usually does. And then when they have to explain what they did, they get a better understanding of it because they, they become the teacher. And through teaching, you learn a lot more. But projects are just fun and they're engaging. And the aspect I believe in, a child who's engaged is a child who's learning. Students that aren't engaged in class, it, to me it's a signal that I'm not doing enough diverse teaching or I'm not getting to where they're learning. So I'll choose last year. I had a student who was successfully getting a very nice F, and I went to a meeting and was given an iPad and told that the iPad was for me to use in my classroom. So I struggled with how could I use one iPad in my classroom without a class set. So I, I came up with how I could use it, which made me feel comfortable. Well, this young man started paying attention because where was I? I was floating around the classroom. He had never done anything right. And all of a sudden, I used the camera aspect one day because he had done a problem correct. I focused over him. I asked him permission if I could show it. He said yes. And all of a sudden, his work was up on the front board. And he was so excited, and the class cheered him on. They thought it was great that his work was on the board. He then got to the point where he would ask to do the work on the iPad. The iPad for him was the one piece that I did not have in class, was that technology that for him took math from being ancient to being current. He ended up getting a B in class at the end of the year. Um, his mother went out and bought him an iPad so he could work on it because she saw the growth that he made. So I think it's just finding what works with all kids is hard. So that's what we'll do hands-on. We'll use technology, uh, projects, try to have a variety of projects. So if they're not into the physics aspect, they might be into the biology aspect. So I constantly keep going out and teaching myself how to do different things. Technology has changed how I teach, not what I teach. What it has done for me is it allows me to not be tethered in the front of the classroom. I can walk around the classroom. I can showcase student work using the camera. Or I can take a picture of it and we can actually use their work as part of a worksheet coming up later. But for my students, it has really opened up for them different projects that they get so engaged in. Their work is incredible. Last year, in one of my classes, we did Angry Birds. We, we joke about it, but they spent six weeks working on Angry Birds. Yes, we played the game in class, 
but they looked at qualitative and quantitative analysis of it. They, they use technology for their solutions. Every unit has a project. So instead of doing a brochure, maybe they do a video. And now I'll just get a YouTube link to go to to grade a project. I find it fascinating as to how rich they get into it. Sometimes they get so involved in the videotaping and the script and everything that they're doing, they forget the math. And that is what they are supposed to be showcasing. I've reached the ripe old age of over 60. We'll just put it that way. So I've been teaching for over 30 years. I'm happier teaching now than I was when I began because I see so much potential with technology and my students react so positively towards it. It wants me to stay involved with them. As one kid said, you're older than my grandparents, but you're younger than my grandparents. It keeps me not being as old, I think. So I, I enjoy the interaction with the students and I do enjoy coming to work every day. I look forward to it. But technology has added that piece I would not have had, and that's the constant learning. And I find the more that I'm learning, the more I can bring back to the class. And it gets a different communication between my students and myself. With using Notability, they learn other aspects of it, so they show it to me. They share it with me. And it becomes more of a sharing process in class than my directly teaching them. I can direct teach the math, but we collaborate on technology. I wish I was beginning all over again. <laughs> For me, technology is all new, but I was not educated with it. So it's that desire to learn. Most teachers today, as they come out, they're not risk takers. They're afraid to try something new for fear of failure. I allow my students to fail. I think a lot of students are not allowed to fail, so failure to them is not something you should do. I believe in pushing kids so they're always risk takers, but if you're going to do that, you have to model it. That means I have to be a risk taker. And for me, my risk is technology, just because it's, it's changing every day. I mean, I have my students on Edmodo now, which I dearly love. I, I use the iPad. I have different apps that I like, Notability, I love to lecture with. And yeah, we lecture, but you lecture in a different way, which is, is good. Common Core I'm excited about because that's really getting into not just the skill, but the application and cross-curricular work. When the state got rid of Golden State exams and their state testing that they had, which required writing across the curriculum, we went to a very skill-based teaching. We were told as a teacher, you just teach the skills. So we have students now that have never been taught how to problem solve because they've had everything as, can you get the skill done and get it done right away? So we now have teachers that that's how they were brought up. And with Common Core coming on, we have a generation of teachers that don't know how to do anything that's, that is problem solving based. And it's not just solving a problem, it's problem solving. So a lot of them think a word problem is problem solving and it's not. But I do think we have given a generation of a big gap. But now the issue is how do we support them and give them the tools to be willing to risk. Staff development has got to take on a different realm. It has to be in their classroom. It can't just be going someplace else for it. They have to see how it works with their kids because it's how they work and interact with their students that allows them to take a risk. The big issue for teachers is to risk, is to take that step forward and stand on the edge. You actually, when you start to fall, you actually go higher than you thought you would. I mean, you find a way to land that's better than before.